support and think this bill is going to do a good job. Honourable Leanne Dalziel. Order. I'm sorry to interrupt the member, but I have asked for, for some tolerance of the situation. Members will walk if they don't heed that. Leanne Dalziel. A point of order, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. The, uh, the, I'm sorry. Order. Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Uh, Mr. Henry, I've cautioned you. You're on your last warning. Right. The member will now leave. The member will now leave the chamber. The member will leave the chamber. You can hear that. A point of order. No, I, I'm waiting for the member to leave the chamber. A point of order. Mr. Honourable Mr. Joe Goodhue. Mr. Chair, I'm just um, aware that it appears to us that the, now my microphone has started working. Yes, it's but, working. But that other microphones have not been working. Yeah, I, I'm, re I'm waiting for the member to leave. <laughs> Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Um, I, I have heard some. Order, Mr. Oh, I'm on. Yes. Um, but but the member Tohenere was absolutely not on. His his speaker was not on at any time. Oh, it's no. Which point of order? The, the, no, that, that's not a point of. I'm, I'm not taking that as a point of order. Um, I made myself quite clear, and I had direct eye contact with the member, and he did uh, resist me in a way which necessitated some action after a warning. Um, look, I've I, I, I made quite clear. I'm, I'm just taking advice as I sit here, so I haven't got any um, predetermined outcome about this. And uh, I've just asked for some tolerance with members in the House, and I'm not sure what's happening on this side now. There is some life uh, come back in on this side <laughs> to the, to the or, audio system. Uh, look, I'm on my feet. Um, so I'm just going to ask for some tolerance. It, it is, um, it is a, uh, a requirement that... It can be, that the House should be broadcast, but well, it's not a requirement, it's an instruction, but not a requirement, if you can understand standing orders on, on that point. So it's a preferable, I've had a look at standing orders, and, and in the absence of that, if we show some accommodation to each other, we can hear what's going on in here. I thank the member for his...
Um, we, we, uh, <laughs> stand, let, let me just tell the members, the standing order I referred to is uh, st uh, standing order 44-1. The proceedings of the House are broadcast on radio during all the hours of sitting. Uh, and nowhere in standing orders is there a requirement that says if they cannot be broadcast, uh, the proceedings of the House will be adjourned or there is no instruction in that form. Now, having worked with uh, the difficulties that we are in, the clerk has brought us a microphone, which we will pass to any member who has the call, and they can use a handheld microphone. And that's the best we can do in the circumstances until it's rectified. <laughs> no, and I think others should hear you. <laughs> What's Mary's advice? I, I, do, I do commit to the House that I won't break into karaoke, sir. Um, I, 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 wish no, I don't wish to impinge on you, sir, because I think you're, you're trying to navigate through this, but I think there is an issue as to whether the House should be suspended until this problem is worked through and I'm happy to move to recall the Speaker, but if I do that, I do not want any uh, imputation put on the fact that I'm challenging your integrity because I think you've acted absolutely admirably. Um, but I would suggest, sir, and move that we recall the Speaker to just get some advice on this. But I don't want to impinge on your integrity, sir. I'll, I'll respond to that. We now have um, a microphone that works. I know that it's not appropriate. Uh, well, it's not the best that it has to be passed around. Yes, it, it is. Well, you're, you're booming loud and clear here. My presumption is that it's being... But on the television well, and the radio. I can't answer that question. I'm... Uh, speaker, I'm just come from the point of order. Uh, Dr. Cam Cord. I have been able to follow the uh, process of this debate on television, but I got the feeling also that some of the things that were being said perhaps by yourself were being broadcast as well. <laughs> So we're. Sir, could I just simply request the following? That if we can't get verification that it is being broadcast, I'm sorry, if we can't get verification that it isn't being broadcast through the normal medium, yeah. then could we seek advice from the Speaker on, 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 on the premise, sir, that I don't wish normally when the Speaker is recalled it's, it's, uh, um, it's a negative conclusion on the Chair and I want nothing no, to do no, from no. that? Look, that's understood. The member only has to move that the Speaker re be recalled. I move that way, sir. Uh, question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. No, we've, we, we've now moved to calling the Speaker. It's, we're past that. You can go back. Chairman. Um, Mr. Speaker, the, the House uh, finds itself in. Is this one going? <laughs> Mr. 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 
Mr Speaker, I think uh, the technical difficulties that the House has been enduring are now apparent by uh, the activities that have taken place when you come in. About uh, 15 minutes ago, uh, there was a bit of a pop and uh, the sound went dead in here. Um, the, we, uh, I asked for the House to show some tolerance and by and large they did that, but then we became aware that um, various parts of the House were being broadcast uh, on radio and on TV without pictures, uh, or at least that's what was reported. And um, order. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> um, and uh, consequently, the, the issue has arisen uh, and, and uh, Standing Order 44.1, the proceedings of the House are broadcast on radio during all hours, etc., became a bit of an issue. We're not entirely sure uh, how many positions around the House that was happening. The clerk arrived with the temporary microphone, which I've now seen. We're still not exactly sure how widely that is being broadcast. As you are aware, it's, it's being amplified inside the House. So it was determined that um, your advice be sought on this, that possibly also gives some time for remedial action to be taken, take place technically, but we look forward to your advice on the matter, Mr Speaker. The, hon <laughs> the Honourable Clayton Costa. And, and sir, I just reiterate my commitment, I've agreed not to say. Um, sir, um, I want to, just for the record, sir, normally when the Speaker is recalled it's a negative on the chair. There's, the, the chair has done an admirable job to try and navigate through this. The simple proposition, sir, is that we've had uh, myself and other colleagues have ascertained that from time to time the chair and the minister from the chair could be heard. A colleague over there could be heard at one point. I sat up in my office after having made a speech. A number of colleagues, the acting whip, uh, my colleague Leanne Delzell, could not be heard audibly. We had a, a member ask to leave the chamber for a variety of reasons, including that perhaps he could not hear. And the question we simply wanted to ask, and, and no implication of all on the chair, the uh, answer was, the, should the proceedings of the House continue whilst there is no uh, audible uh, noise through uh, both Radio New Zealand, their broadcast system, our internal system, nor the television broadcast? We haven't checked the internet, but it cannot be heard, sir, and it may be that that's sporadic or patchy through here, but we wish to seek your advice in respect of that. Speaking of the point of order. Speaking of the point of order at first, uh, Louise Upston. Um, I, I've not found That's anywhere in the um, standing orders that there is a requirement for it to be broadcast. Um, surely the debate occurs within this chamber, um, and I'd like to request, Mr Speaker, that we continue. Speaking of the point of order, Brendan Horan. <laughs> I think from the opposition side that uh, we're most concerned that the opposition isn't being heard, but not just in New Zealand, because across the world people are live streaming, and admittingly in Finland and Hungary they've turned off from New Zealand, but we don't want the rest of the world to think that we can't operate a simple sound system, sir. So if you could take that into consideration in your ruling. Thank you. I thank honourable members for their... Oh, does, the, does Claire Curran wish to speak to the point of order? Claire Curran. Can someone switch it on for us, please? Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think that um, this is actually. Uh, thrown into relief, the issue that we're dealing with here is that, um, particularly on this side of the House, members can't be heard, um, and whether it's just the opposition side of the House or not, it's unknown whether or not they're able to be heard on radio. Uh, uh, and the member made a very important point about the internet um, and the importance of being able to communicate um, the proceedings of Parliament via the internet. The other point I'd like to make is that um, since the um, sound went off, there has been issues of order in the House, Mr Speaker, and, um, and uh, one member has been ejected be because of the, um, the amount of disorder, and so I would ask you to take that into account. I, uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith speaking to the point of order. Mr Speaker, I think it would set a dangerous precedent to state that unless Parliament was being broadcast by television and radio, that it could not continue its important proceedings. 
The chair of the committee quite appropriately ruled uh, that the House should be able to continue. In fact, this Parliament performed for over 70 years without microphones or without radio. Uh, and the precedent that would be set in the event that you rule that we must have Parliament broadcast for it to be able to proceed with the uh, business of the House, uh, in my view, would be quite detrimental uh, and that, with a little bit of courtesy, there is no reason why Parliament cannot continue with its important functions. Point of order. Uh, Andrew Williams speaking at the point of order. Yes, um, point of order, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Two, two points. One, we seem to be in a vacuum here in terms of anyone coming with technical expertise who has come and advised us. Uh, much of this seems to be done just from various people's opinions, uh, and, and I am somewhat aghast that perhaps the Chairman and the Speaker have just simply not asked for the technical people to advise what is the situation. Is this a temporary situation or could this be ongoing? If it's ongoing, then obviously it causes a more difficult situation. And secondly, I think the point which was made by several of my colleagues is the fact that one side of the House still appears to have a reasonable amount of amplification, while the opposition side of the House doesn't. Therefore, if it was sort of evenly balanced, it wouldn't be a, too much of a problem. But the fact that the people out there who are listening to the broadcast are simply not hearing the opposition viewpoint does compromise the whole debate, and therefore, on the basis that it compromises the whole debate, and only the government's position essentially can be heard, must put the whole debate into question. I thank honourable members. I'll hear finally from the honourable well, Simon appreciate, th Thank you, Mr Speaker. I appreciate uh, Mr Speaker will want to get on with this, but it is a relatively rare point that uh, uh, we're not likely to deal with uh, commonly. I, I just concur with uh, Louise Upton. I don't think there is a rule directly on this. Uh, and I'd also just uh, make the point, Mr Speaker, really related to the point Honourable Dr Nick Smith made, that this is a debating chamber and the central point of this chamber is that members can hear each other. We can now do that with that microphone. Anything else I'd, I'd suggest to uh, Mr Speaker is really ancillary to that point. The other point I'd make relatedly is that because this is now by microphone, it's not as if Hansard cannot transpose and record this. They can do that. So anyone who wishes to, following this debate, will be able to see what is said verbatim. So in fact, people outside of this chamber, whether it's being live broadcast or not, will be able to pick up what is said. Honourable members, I appreciate uh, your constraint and your, or restraint, I should say, and, and your, hello, is the, <laughs> the battery fire notes come back to life. I appreciate your restraint on, on, on this difficult situation. And uh, I must say, if I could be a little bit uh, facetious for a moment myself, I was watching this during, while chairing another meeting. And when I saw my colleague here, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove, with a microphone in his hand, I wondered whether he was actually singing to the House. And uh, I was most impressed. I thought this is a, a new talent that uh, one of my parliamentary colleagues was demonstrating to the House. But uh, little did I realise the, uh, the, the reality of the difficulties being, uh, being confronted by members. I think some of the points being raised by members are, are, are very important. Were the situation to result in some parties uh, contribution to this debate being heard in public and other parties not, that would be a pretty un unacceptable situation. Uh, that would uh, result in the views of, of one party getting through to the public and another party not. And I think it would be hard to argue that that wasn't an unacceptable situation. And this microphone is still... Uh, it's come back again. But... Uh, what I'm, and, and some have asked why this technically can't be fixed up right away, and apparently one of the problems is that the system is highly computerised and work is going on at this moment to try and rectify the problem. Uh, the first job was to find out exactly what was going wrong, and now work is going on to rectify it, but it won't be done immediately. My advice is that, uh, that all... Uh, that sound is getting through on Radio New Zealand, television and the web streaming that members have raised. But what would be needed from members is, is uh, preparedness to be a little helpful in this situation that where the microphones are working, which seems to be more on the, on the government side of the house, that's fine. 
But what we'd ask the chair of the, what I'd ask the chair of the committee to do is to allow a little more time for one of these handheld mics to be uh, made available to all other members because where they're being used, the sound is being uh, transmitted, is being, I'm advised, being received over radio, television, and web streaming. So if members could just be a little more, uh, well, not more. You've been very cooperative so far. If members are prepared to uh, be that that little bit cooperative during these difficult times and make sure there's time for members to maybe before the before the clock is started, uh, Mr. Chairman, on a, on a member's uh, you know contribution during uh, these committee stages, that that, that that the time is set from when the member has a microphone in their hand, and and I think under those circumstances, so long as the public is getting equal uh, feed from all sides of the house. House, and that is, I'm advised, what will happen if these handheld mics are used where the desk mics are not working, and if we just allow, make sure time is allowed so that no member is disadvantaged through waiting for a handheld mic to be delivered. If I could ask the support staff and the, the, the staff here in the House to assist with uh, making sure these microphones are delivered to members as quickly as possible, and I really appreciate members' preparedness to be constructive during a, a difficult time. Uh, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove.